Mary again and welcome back to my kitchen. It is spring and it is time for asparagus. And there's so many of us that love that very first taste of spring. I would like to share with you today how I can asparagus in our home. Now, one thing that I will say is canned asparagus is going to be fully cooked and soft. It will not be mushy, but it will be fully cooked and soft. So if you are looking for crunchy asparagus, the only way to obtain crunchy asparagus is by pickling it. Um, I do have a video on how I personally pickle asparagus, and we will put the link to that video down in the description of this one. So if you're interested in pickled asparagus and having that nice snap and crunch, Follow the link down in the description. Now today I would really like to do a side-by-side -side comparison of traditionally water-packed asparagus and dry-packed asparagus. Now traditional water-packed vegetables is obviously just the way it sounds. It's your raw vegetables in your canning jar and then you pour water or broth over them before you place your lid and then go ahead and can them. Dry-packed vegetables um, is where you place your raw vegetables into your canning jar and then you don't cover them inside the jar with any type of fluid. No water, no broth. Now it's controversial in the fact that we've always been taught and it is true that water um, transfers heat better than air does, okay? And so the idea always being that um, we've always been told to cover our vegetables and our food with fluid inside of our jars because it transfers the heat much better. And so the worry is, well, if you don't have fluid inside of that jar, then the heat penetration is not occurring properly and that could get you sick. Well, I'm here to say that I have been um, first of all, I've been canning 40 years, so I have a few years of, of experience of home canning. And for the last six years, I have been personally dry packing vegetables in our home. And we have been consuming them, myself and my family have been consuming them all the way through the six, six year period. Um, and obviously I'm alive, I'm healthy, and so is the rest of my family. In my experience, dry packed vegetables are as safe and last just as long on the shelf as traditional water packed. The really big difference between the two is the results, okay? If you think about boiling a food item and realistically water packed, that's what you're doing. You've got your vegetable in the jar, you've got your water in the jar, and what you're doing is you're boiling it inside of your jar. And if you think about boiling food, what you're doing is you are uh, releasing a lot of that flavor and nutrition right into the fluid inside of the jar. And most of us, number one, don't drink vegetable uh, juice that's, you know, inside your canning jar. You, you drain that off normally or you put it in a soup or something to, to kind of preserve the flavor and use it for something else. But most of us just drain that water off that has zapped out a lot of the flavor and zapped out a lot of the nutrition of the vegetable. We drain it off and we only eat the vegetable itself. The thing with dry packing is, is that you don't have that water. It's not boiling in there. It's more of a, a steaming or a baking, all right? So dry packed vegetables, I like to describe them as closer to roasted vegetable results, where traditional water packed vegetables are more like boiled results. So today I'm gonna to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm going to show you how I personally pack my asparagus, both in traditional water pack and in dry pack. Um, and I guess I will just get things started and you can make the decision at the end between the comparison of which you would like to try in your home. Now, uh, I'm going to give you a few tips along the way. Um, as far as asparagus is concerned, most of us purchase our asparagus in little bundles like this. And I will tell you that I have found the easiest way to pack asparagus and I personally really like to pack asparagus asparagus in long spears. Um, I do chop some of it and I will show you that also, but I prefer to pack it in spears, particularly when you are choosing to dry pack. It is really, really important to do it in spears because 
It will not shrink down in your jar as much if it is in long spears. So I'm going to just page you down here and we will get to it. And I will show you the easiest method that I have found to pack asparagus. All right, so you have these two rubber bands on here and I'm dripping wet because I have already washed this. But what I do is I go ahead and I cut off the top rubber band um, that holds all of their fluffy little heads together. And then in the sink, I will kind of fan it out and I rinse and wash my asparagus with that top rubber band off, but I leave the bottom one on there, okay? And what I do is whatever size jar you prefer to can in, I'm going to be using quarts. Now, when you are packing asparagus as spears, um, chopped, not so much, but if you want the long spears of asparagus, and particularly in dry pack, I do suggest that you do long spears in dry pack. Um, but your traditional water pack, you can chop it if you want to, or you can leave it in spears also. It's just your choice. But if you're going to be doing the long spears, I really suggest using a wide mouth jar. Now, whether that be a quart wide mouth jar or a pint wide mouth jar, that's up to you and how much you need per meal for your family. But what I do is after I have removed that top band on the asparagus, and you can see that I still have the bottom rubber band on there. After I remove that top band, I go ahead and I measure my asparagus. Let's see if I can maybe turn this a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. This big jar is actually, I've, I've got something to tell you about that too. But what I do is I just take the tops of the asparagus and I measure them up in my jar and you want to leave probably about a half inch head space but if not you're going to be able to kind of bust the heads off when you're packing them and your height will be okay but try to go uh, about a half inch below the top of your jar and then what i do is i just cut the entire bunch off approximately a quarter of an inch less than the length of the jar okay so i just take this whole bunch of asparagus hold it and cut okay and then it is easiest to just keep this in a bunch in your hand and stick it into your quart size canning jar now we're not done with this yet though now these tail end pieces you still have good asparagus in here and I will show you what I do with these in a minute but I'm just gonna go back go back to this jar for now now this bottom rubber band actually I'll tell you right now this bottom rubber band eventually I remove this bottom rubber band and keep these these are really good rubber bands and what I use them for is I use them for ferments now I've got some beautiful sauerkraut going on in this jar right here and what I have done is I have used that beautiful asparagus rubber band to hold my towel on and keep the dust and the bugs out. So keep those rubber bands. I do cut the top one off just because it's hard to remove, you know, hard to remove off of the off the tips of the asparagus. If I try to remove this one, a lot of times I'll bust the heads and stuff off. So I like to snip the top one but I do keep the bottom ones for other projects just like this. So now I'm going to get this jar out of my way. And we will go back to preparing our asparagus. Now, every two jars of asparagus generally take me two, two bunches, okay? So every two quart jars, um, actually it takes me three bunches, I'm sorry one bunch per jar and then another bunch to split between the two jars. When you are packing asparagus, I want you to pack it as tightly as possible. Okay, so I can usually get about one and a half pounds of asparagus in each quart jar. So I've got another one, you know, you fan it out in your sink and you get it washed up really good and I've already kind of washed these and rebound them, but you go ahead and wash them up really good. You keep that bottom a uh, rubber band on there and then again do your measuring and cut your asparagus now I'm not as picky when I am just uh, doing plain um, plain canned asparagus as what I am when I'm doing my pickled asparagus my pickled asparagus 
Each person usually takes one or two sprigs of that. It's not just a pile of vegetables on your plate. And so my pickled asparagus, I am a little bit more careful with how I pack it and how I cut it because I want all those little, those pretty little asparagus heads to be intact. But when I am pressure canning or hot water bathing, just plain asparagus, I am not as picky about it. And I will show you the easiest way that I have found to pack these jars. And like I said, you want these jars packed really tightly. And so, you know, I told you that you can fit about a pound and a half of asparagus in each quart jar. I take a, uh, a handle of any sort of kitchen uh, utensil that you have that will fit really nicely down in there. And you just press those asparagus down in there and then you pack in more asparagus and get this packed as tightly as possible. And it gets to the point where uh, you can only get a few spears in at a time. But using your fingers to hold, using your fingers to hold the heads down, you can make a space and you can jam more uh, asparagus spears in there. And again, like I said, I do personally prefer to pack, especially when I'm dry packing, um, or dry, uh, yeah, dry pack canning, I do really prefer to have them in spears. And uh, you'll see the results at the end and you'll fully understand why I really prefer them in spears. Yes, it's kind of a pain in the neck to pack these things this way. It slows you down quite a bit, um, but the results are actually amazing. And it also presents a little bit better on your dinner plate to have these beautiful long spears of asparagus alongside of your, your meat or whatever it is that you're serving um, for that meal. It just looks really nice to have long spears of asparagus on your plate. So you just work them down in there as tightly as you can every once in a while kind of turn your uh, turn your jar and see if you can fit in another couple of spears here and there and we are really getting really tight in this jar so I think that I think that this one is pretty much almost done Let's see if I can pack a couple more in here That first handful, the first uh, bunch of asparagus always goes in very, very well. And then as you're packing more and it does get more and more difficult. And that's why I said, you know, asparagus is not one of the easiest things to pack, but just keep working at it. Now we have that jar so nice and packed tight. It's amazing. I take and I tap it a couple of times to kind of hopefully use gravity and get it down into my jar a little bit better. So here's a couple of bangs. And then what I do, you can see that I cut mine a little bit long, and so the little heads are poking up past the top of the jar. I just take and kind of mush them down in there. Um, you know, on the plate, I'm not going to worry quite so much about those beautiful asparagus heads, but I just break those tops with my thumbs and kind of mush them down into the jar. Just like that. Now leave approximately a half inch headspace. Um, now if you are going to be traditionally water packing this, I want you to leave more headspace. If you're going to go ahead and pour water or broth into your jar, I would like you to leave at least one inch headspace. If you are dry packing and you're not adding fluid inside of your jar, you go ahead and you go up to the top of the jar. Half inch is good enough and it will be fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pack uh, pack these other bunches that I have going on here. I'm just going to pack a couple more here for you. All right, so I'm going to call that good. Then I give it a couple of taps to settle them down a little bit and press their little heads down. So that you don't have anything that will be pressing up on the lid of your jar that you will eventually put on there. Okay, now.
I talked about how specifically when I am dry packing, how I like to have long spears. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare some cut asparagus that I will also dry pack, okay? And I want you to see the difference between a dry pack asparagus in spears and a dry packed asparagus in pieces. Um, I think I need to get a funnel. Just hang on one moment here. All right, here's my funnel just so it's a little easier to get into the jar. Now, um, you know, you can cut your asparagus into whatever size pieces you want when you're uh, packing it. If you do want to dry pack in this method, um, just like when you're doing it with the spears, um, I would really uh, encourage you to pack it densely, okay? Because like I said, cut, cut dry packed asparagus really shrinks a lot. And generally what you end up with is about only one half or three quarters of a full jar at the end of the canning period. So pack it in there tight, guys. And you can do it just like if you've seen my, uh, if you've seen my video on uh, dry packing potatoes, take and shake the contents and kind of press them down and settle them in, kind of like you're trying to get pieces of a puzzle to fit together, okay? Just really pack them down in there by shaking and settling with your hands and your fingers. Shake and settle them again, really packing them in there tight. I think we can fit just a few more in. Now, like I said, when you are dry packing, you do not have to be um, as picky about your headspace because you're not going to have any fluid inside of this jar. And so you're not going to have to worry about siphoning or overflow. You know, the fluid isn't going to come out of your jar because you're not, you're not putting fluid in the jar. You only have just the fresh vegetables. So I've got these packed super, super tight. Hopefully I'm not going to have too much shrinkage, but I do know that I am going to have a, a bit of shrinkage. But that will be our dry packed cut, um, our dry packed cut pack, okay? So you can see that I have really, really packed them in there as tightly as I can. And then we also have a dry pack spear, okay? So those are the two ways that I pack my uh, asparagus, whether I'm doing dry pack or whether I'm doing a traditional water pack. This is how I do it. All right, so now I would like to show you one more thing. I'll continue preparing all the rest of my asparagus after I'm done uh, being on cam here. But I want to show you another thing that I do um, to just get the most out of my bunches of asparagus. So you know that we have these cut off bases of asparagus. Now a lot of times, a lot of times of course the bottoms of the stalks because they have been cut and um, in your grocery store or whatever, you know, they're, uh, they try to kind of keep them moist uh, before they sell them but of course you're going to have some, some drying out and on top of that um, asparagus can become kind of woody and tough. Uh, that's why it's better to always have very small skinny spears but we all know how asparagus can be tough. Now, if you have never prepared asparagus before, instead of just trying to guess exactly what's good and what's bad on these stems, I will show you a little, uh, a little trick. Now, if your asparagus is woody and tough, it will not snap, okay? You can see I'm bending it, will not snap. So what I do is I work my way up that stem and see if I can snap any off. Now this one obviously is just trash, okay? That's gonna go to the chickens. But I'll grab another one here and see if I can get an example. See how you bend it and it won't snap? You, oh, there it snapped. Now, this is my dry end and the part that wouldn't, uh, wouldn't snap. The rest of that stem is good. And what I do is I just break that and put it into a canning jar. So check all of your asparagus that way. That one is just so wilty. There it snapped. So the bad end goes for the chickens and the good piece gets snapped and put into a canning jar. 
So that is how I check where the asparagus is fresh and good or whether it is woody. So you just go through all of your bundles this way. Now that one's really not, not good. I don't like him. I'm trying to stay on cam here for you guys. There, snapped right there, so I have another good portion. It is amazing, you guys, how much asparagus you can actually salvage out of all these ends. Um, just because it's the end of the asparagus doesn't mean that it's bad. Just keep checking every single one, and you will be amazed at how much more asparagus you can salvage off of these cut ends. So what I do with these ends, these snapped ends, now you can go ahead and you can can them just as they are, but what I like to do is I like to take all of these little ends and pieces and I like to cover them in chicken broth and I just can this as an, a cream of asparagus soup base. I add my cream and uh, all of my seasonings and stuff, I just add that at the time that I open to serve it. But that is a great little tip to get the most out of your asparagus. These ends are not necessarily bad. You can get, you can salvage a lot of product just by checking by hand to see if it snaps easily. And uh, you can go ahead and can those up too. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish preparing all of my asparagus, and then I will come back in a minute, and I will uh, continue at that point. All right, so I have all of my asparagus packed, and now I'm going to do um, just my side-by-side -side examples going into the canner. Now remember when I said that your dry pack, you don't have to worry quite as much about the headspace, okay? So I really fill these jars up good because they will shrink just a little bit. Now the spears do not shrink as much as the cut asparagus pieces do, but I do bring them right up to the top of the jar. I leave approximately half inch headspace and that's all I do. Now when I am going to be water packing, traditionally water packing, I leave more headspace on those. This little guy is kind of up. We'll push him down too. I leave about one inch headspace on the stuff that I'm going to traditionally water pack. And here's the cut example of that. You can see that I have a one inch headspace in there too. Now, a lot of people when they are dry packing, whether it be potatoes or carrots or whatever it is that they're dry packing, a lot of people add a, a teaspoon of butter, just a, a little you know, slab of butter in there, and they also add salt. As far as my personal opinion goes, and like I said, I've been dry packing um, for six years now, uh, the salt really does not do anything in a dry pack to flavor your food. And remember that salt in heat canning is for flavor only. It has absolutely no effect on safety. You do not have to have salt inside of your jars for safety. It is just for taste and flavor. So in a dry pack situation, your salt you can dump salt in there, but it's really not gonna do much to flavor your food. Now in a traditional water pack, you have water carrying that salt all through the vegetables. And so in a water pack, I do prefer to add salt just because we don't have any dietary salt, you know, salt restrictions, no dietary restrictions on salt. And we do like the flavor of salt with our food. But on a dry pack, it's not gonna do anything. It's either gonna sit on the top of your vegetables or it's going to sift all the way through to the bottom and just sit in the bottom of your jar. Salt will do nothing. Now the same with butter. Butter in the canning process will melt and it will just melt all the way down to the bottom of your jar and then after you've taken your jar out of the canner and you allow it to cool, that melted butter will just re-solidify in the very, very bottom of your jar. And so it really does nothing. Uh, it, it doesn't stick to the raw vegetables. It doesn't flavor them. The only benefit that I can see of adding butter in your dry packed vegetables is if you think that maybe in the future you may not have uh, butter or some sort of a fat or whatever to help reheat your food to eat it. In that case, if you want to include it, it's not going to harm anything. But I personally just see no need to put butter or salt in my dry pack. Now, in the traditional water pack, I do add um, salt if I can find. Well, you know, you guys, I'd lose my head if I 
didn't have it attached. I guess I'll use this measuring spoon here. This is a full teaspoon. Okay, in canning salt or kosher salt, when you use canning and kosher salt to a quart jar, it is, uh, it's good to add one teaspoon of salt for flavor. In a pint jar, use a half of a teaspoon um, of salt. Um, I do exclusively use fine ground pink Himalayan. And fine ground pink Himalayan actually has quite a, a few more granulars that can fit into a measuring spoon. So I automatically, with the, the fine ground pink Himalayan salt, I always cut my measurement in half. So instead of a full teaspoon per quart jar, I'm only going to put in a half a teaspoon in my traditional water pack. So I'm going to do a scant half a teaspoon in both of these jars. And then I am going to go ahead and cover those two with water to the same. Now these are my dry pack back here. These don't have very much headspace. These are going to be my traditional water pack veggies. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover that with either broth or water. My choice today is water. Now when you, uh, when you cover with broth, um, the canning time for asparagus does cover for the broth also. Broth is canned at 20 minutes for pints and 25 minutes for quarts. And so with your asparagus time today, the, the broth time would be covered in safety also with your asparagus canning time. So we're just going to go ahead and we are going to cover that uh, to one inch headspace. Then like normal on both of your jars, whether it's traditional water pack or dry pack, you go ahead and you wipe with a wet, a clean wet washcloth just to make sure that you don't have any food particles on that sealing edge. That little guy was kind of wanting to come with my rag, so I'm going to push him over. Wipe those rims clean. And then we are going to place our canning flats and rings. And I am going to match the temperature of my jars and my food to the temperature of my canner, okay? So I have room temperature food today. I'm putting them into a room temperature canner. Fingertip tight. So let me page you up here before I, sorry guys, sometimes life just gets in the way and we just got to take care of it. Um, but anyway, so I showed you how I pack and how I season the traditional water packed asparagus and I choose not to season my dry pack asparagus. Um, now I have placed it in a room temperature canner because my jars were room, room temperature and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly heat my pressure canner and vent for 10 minutes and if you are doing pints by pressure canning by PC, pints of asparagus are 30 minutes and quarts of asparagus are 40 minutes. Now like I said, if you choose, like let's say you're going to do uh, your traditional water pack or broth pack and you're specifically thinking that you're going to use this for um, cream of asparagus soup. If you choose to, instead of using water, if you want to use broth, which I many, many times do, I really, I prefer to use chicken broth because it's kind of a lighter flavored broth, but the canning time of 30 and 40 minutes more than cover that broth time also, okay? Broth is done at 20 and 25 minutes where your asparagus itself is done at 30 and 40 minutes. So it is very safe to combine the asparagus and the broth. Both will be canned at an adequate time. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and slowly heat my canners here today and uh, bring them up to a vent and vent them for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to pressure can at my appropriate pressure for my altitude for 40 minutes. And then I will come back after the canner has cooled off and I will show you the side-by-side -side comparison between the traditional water pack and the dry packed asparagus. So we'll see you in just a little while. Okay, so I am back after my 40 minute uh, pressure canning session. And I failed to mention that if you want to hot water bath your asparagus, it would be three hours 
for either size jar, pint or quart. But after my pressure canning session here, I have allowed my canner to cool off and I'm going to remove these jars so that you can see the results for yourself. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the water packed out first. And this was the cut asparagus packed in water. You can see how beautiful, nice and full that jar is. This is the water packed spears of asparagus. And you can see how beautiful and nice and full that is. Now, this is where it gets interesting and this is why I say when I dry pack asparagus, I prefer to do it in spears. And this is why. I gotta move this lid here. This was the dry packed cut asparagus. Do you remember how full that jar was? And look at, now we are down to half the contents because it shrank and, and got softer as it canned. So here is the water packed cut asparagus and the dry packed cut asparagus. All right, and so here just to remind you, the water packed spears of asparagus and the dry packed spears of asparagus. Now you can see because I kept them in spears and the sides of the jar support the asparagus, you don't come out with just a half, a half full jar. Look at how much better the spears hold up in dry pack. Pretty amazing, huh? All right, so I am going to allow these jars to cool and seal. Let's get you up here. Um, I'm gonna allow them to cool and seal, and then I will come back after uh, that cooling and sealing period of time is over, and I will actually open up um, probably uh, one of each and um, just allow you to see the difference in the texture and, uh, and I guess the results. You've seen the results with your own eyes as far as the difference between water and dry in the jar, but out of the jar, I'll show you what the texture is like for both of them. So I'll be back in a few minutes after everything seals. All right, so I'm back after my cooling and sealing period. All of my jars sealed just fine, um, but I just want to review again um, the difference, particularly in the traditional uh, water-packed cut asparagus and the dry-pack cut asparagus. I, that is just a huge, huge um, difference in results. Uh, the water allows the asparagus to kind of remain plump and, uh, you know, the jar is full where the cut asparagus when it's dry packed, uh, you know, as I said at the very beginning of the video, you know, there's just no way of avoiding uh, canned asparagus from being soft. It's going to be fully cooked and it's going to be soft. It's just the nature of the beast. If you want crispy, firm asparagus, your only option realistically is to pickle it, but this is plain canned and so you can just really see the drastic, drastic differences between traditional water pack and dry pack when it's cut. So I'm going to uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison of the full spears so that you can better see, I guess, what the texture of the asparagus is. So I have my traditional water packed asparagus and you can see that is absolutely beautiful and then I also have my dry packed asparagus which in spears is absolutely beautiful but I just want to stress one more time please pack your jars very tightly very densely you saw how I worked to just make sure that I got as much into that jar as I could but the results of dry packed asparagus when it's done in spears is actually really really nice 
and I do personally prefer the dry pack method. Um, you know, sitting on your shelves, no, they might, <clears throat> might not be as pretty dry packed, but the taste results, um, in my opinion, are better with the dry pack. When you pack asparagus in water, a lot of the flavor is just kind of boiled and leached into that water, and they also get kind of waterlogged. The asparagus itself kind of gets waterlogged, where the dry packed asparagus, that does not occur. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to open up both of these um, spear uh, variety of uh, asparagus, and I'll get them dumped out here. All right, so here's our dry pack. And as you can see, it does come out in just solid pieces. You know, they're not falling apart, okay? But they are cooked and soft. Here's our water pack. Same thing. You can just really dump them out nicely. But here's where you get kind of a little bit of a difference is in the actual texture and uh, how the asparagus kind of holds together. So with the traditional water packed asparagus, look at, I can just even kind of picking them up. They kind of bust in my fork. You can see how that is. So these are really, really soft. They're good, okay? There's nothing wrong with water packed asparagus. We do enjoy eating it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's delicious, um, but it is very, very soft. Now the dry packed asparagus, is also soft okay but it does have a little bit more structural integrity it does not bust it doesn't just kind of fall apart on the fork like the water packed did i'll pick up a few more here you see how they're not busting and so realistically the texture of the dry packed asparagus is better than the water packed asparagus is you can see how it just holds together better. See how that is? Now I'll go back to the water packed again. Get those pieces off that I already kind of picked up. And get down to some pieces that we haven't touched yet. All right, let's get this guy out of the way too. All right, so here's a little bit bigger of a piece of asparagus that's water packed. And look, you can see right away it's just, it just kind of falls apart, okay? It breaks and falls apart. I'll get a couple more of these here. And well, now those didn't, but you saw how it happened with a lot of the other pieces. So I personally, I just really prefer, um, when I am canning asparagus, just plain asparagus, I really personally prefer the dry pack method but I prefer the dry pack method in full spears compared to cut dry packed because you can just see what the issue is here. There's nothing that supports these little pieces and so as they cook they just kind of collapse into the jar. So the dry packed asparagus presents better inside of the jar and it actually kind of, um, <clears throat> I think, presents better on a plate. To have a full spear of asparagus is just a little bit better on a plate of food. But that is my side-by-side uh, -side comparison for you. So um, I guess that that is just about it as far as uh, plain canned asparagus is concerned. Um, I dry pack a lot of different varieties of vegetables. And even though dry packed asparagus does come out soft, um, I really do prefer uh, the results of dry pack over the traditional water pack. But it's just extremely important to pack those jars as densely and as tightly as possible because even in the full spears, if you don't get your jar completely full, they are gonna kind of collapse in the jar. In fact, I might have Ah, yes, I do. I have one handy here where I can show you. So this particular jar, I didn't get it packed as tightly as the one that I just opened for you. And you can see that because I didn't get it packed quite as tight, 
the asparagus is starting to collapse you know just because it's cooked now it's not firm and it can't stand up on its own it's kind of collapsing into the jar so this is a prime example of why you really 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 want a good solid and dense pack now you know they're being supported okay on this side of the jar but where I had excess space on this side of the jar and I didn't pack it tight enough and densely enough it's allowed enough room for those spears to then go ahead and kind of collapse into the jar so that is <clears throat> my take on dry pack versus traditional water pack on asparagus both are delicious both are still usable and wonderful to have on your shelves um, but maybe that will give you a little bit of insight on which method you would prefer to use yourself in your home thank you so much for spending your time again with me god bless you all and happy canning everybody